All right, guys, are we ready? <laughs> Welcome back to the live stream. This is uh, live stream number three. Number three, audio levels look good. I, I think we're good. All right, we're going to go. Um, lots of projects today. All right, got it over on the main table here. Um, got some packages in the mail. We'd have to unpack these. Um, yeah, this is going to be fun. Got some good stuff. Got a little something. Okay, guys, are we ready? Oh, <laughs> look at this. I gotta, back to the live gotta stream. mute, gotta is, mute uh, this. Stream number three. Number three. Right, yeah. Audio levels look good. Here we go. We're good. Boom. We'll mute that one. Gotta pull my live chat down. Lots of projects today. All right. Got it over on the main table. Still learning. Live chat number three. Or live stream number three. There we go. Now where's my chat? There's my chat. Because you guys might say some stuff. You guys might say some stuff, and I don't want to miss any of that. All right. Let's dive right into this stuff, okay? So. Last time, this would have been super, super helpful. All right, so I went and got myself an actual valve tool. All right, we can take that out. Hey, Roger, good, good of you to join us, <laughs> join me, I guess, me and the mouse in my pocket. Uh, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. It's a, what is it, Tuesday? Tuesday? All right, what we got here, valve tool. This is going to end up in the box permanently, so we always have one of those. So it also came with a bunch of extra valves in case I would ever need those. Um, not sure why I should ever need those, but I got some now. All right, so that's cool. Now the other one, this one on top, was a special request from the last live stream. Okay, so let's see. I thought I had a little knife over here. Let me grab my knife. And this one might be a little bit of fun. Not sure if we're going to do anything with this one tonight. All right. Not sure if we're going to do anything with this one tonight because I actually got a lot to do. So let's open it up and let's see what's inside here. Handy little tools. Yeah, I'm glad to finally have one. I actually can't believe I didn't have one of those valve stem tools. But in the last uh, live stream, it was requested that I pick up a book and start reading live on stream. So I got it. Got myself a copy of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. It's a little beefier than I thought, a little bit more uh, deep than I thought. Oh my God, look at the little, little print, man. Really little print. <laughs> That's, uh, this might take us a little while. This might be another 40 hours uh, just to read through this on live stream. But we've got Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance in hand right here um what is it the real cycle you're working on is a cycle called yourself yourself the real cycle you're working on is a cycle called yourself all right i see where this is going all right so okay the study of the art of motorcycle maintenance is really a miniature study of the art of rationality itself Working on a motorcycle, working well, caring is to become part of a process to achieve an inner peace of mind. The motorcycle is primarily a mental phenomenon. <laughs> Where's my beer? Hey T, how are you? We got a, a book, sorry, reading. Um, I forget, who requested this? Anybody in chat remember who requested that we start reading this book? Uh, maybe what we'll do, I'll dig into this a little bit more. And maybe like before each episode, we'll read just a couple minutes out of this book. And maybe it'll become a thing. But man, that 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 first uh, few sentences was a little deep. It's going good, T. We're having fun. I got a little package dropped off in the mail uh, yesterday. I just brought it right down to the shop. I, uh, I didn't even open it, guys. I didn't even open it. And... Uh, I just wanted to come on stream and open this box of parts that I got. Hey, Nick. <laughs> That's okay, man. Catch the video later, man. I hope you're doing well. Uh, congratulations on the successful re-spoking of your wheels. That's a really, really... That's a challenging gig, man. So uh, congratulations on that. Let's unbox some parts, guys. It is always nice to get parts in the mail and to be able to open them up and see what we got. So, guys, can you guess where I ordered parts from? Can you guys just a real wild gander at where I got some parts from? Yeah, Common Motor, the old uh, trusty 
Common Motor. That's where I went and picked up some essential parts. Ooh, gotta get this book out of the way though. Don't wanna screw up the Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. You don't wanna mess that up. Let's get in this box. I ordered some just kinda basic stuff, all right? Just some basic stuff to kind of get us started here. And uh, the cool thing that Common Motor did with this is they were able to combine my shipping on a couple of different things. So they actually refunded me like $24 because I got a little heavy item in here today, okay? Let's see, is this camera going to be a good shot of this box? Ah, yeah, light's a little better there. We'll hang out here. Let's turn that puppy just a little bit. And let's see what we've got. All right. I'm going to go for the heavy one right away, okay? Because I see it, and I'm excited, and I deliberated a lot with myself when I ordered these. Any guesses on what these are? These are heavy, okay? They're, they're, they're heavy. <laughs> and I think that they are going to look amazing on the Apocalypse bike. I think they're going to look great on the Apocalypse bike. I think it's exactly what we want to do. And it's gonna kind of set the tone, I think, for the build. I think it's gonna set the tone for the build. T, trippy. Are you tripping or is the book trippy? Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, one or the other. All right, here we go, guys. You ready for the big reveal? I'm excited. These are gonna go on the 1970 CL350. Any guesses yet? Any guesses what we got in the box? Let's take a look at these. I, I went back and forth. I went back and forth a lot on what I was going to do with this. And here we go. Let's unwrap. I went with the black shock. I went with the black shocks for the Apocalypse bike. They're actually a little bit better than I thought they were going to look because if you can tell, the spring on these is kind of a little bit of a flat black. <laughs> these are going to look freaking cool on the bike let's get the other one okay all these inserts i'm sure you just need those if they don't line up quite right i haven't had any problem with these oh common motor common motor is the best with this dude you get the free little swag throughout the whole thing and they have amazing little stickers and nice selection of stuff there too it's down here oh they even gave you a free wrench that's pretty cool we got that so let's dive in here this one better be black too. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my marbles. No, there we go. We got a pair of beautiful black shocks. Okay. This, <laughs> this is going to look so freaking cool. Let's go over to the bike right now. Because I want to show you kind of the direction I'm going with this. Okay. It's a little bit different. Don't hate me. But here we are. Here's the 1970. It's got a CB tank on it. For those of you who caught that, very observant. But then I have these old school saddlebags. Remember, this is an apocalypse bike that I want to put together. So in the apocalypse, you're going to have to haul stuff around. And I'm going to put those black shocks right there. This is all just kind of temporarily just kind of sitting there. But look at how cool these old saddlebags are. What character, right? Um, I'm gonna love this. And then we'll get a rear fender. I do not have a rear fender, so I'm actually trying to source a rear fender right now. Once I get that, we'll be in business. But I don't have one right now. And we're gonna do this. I think this is what we're gonna do. Um, the challenge is with the saddlebags, the CB or the CL exhaust is gonna be really tough to deal with. So I'll probably have to go and find a left side CB cover for that. And then remember, we're gonna, I think I'm just gonna like rhino line all of this. I'm gonna rhino line the tank. I'm gonna rhino line this. I'm gonna rhino line the saddlebags. And then we're gonna go nice black. Nice black, we'll probably use VHT on all this stuff. And it's gonna look freaking cool. Yeah, T, I'm gonna do something a little fun with this build for sure. I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with this build, T, because I got a lot of parts. And honestly, I've got enough here to build a bike. I got enough sitting here to, you know, really build a bike and do something kind of cool with it. But man, check out this angle on that. It's going to look cool. We can put the CL bars on it. All right. It's going to be sweet. 
And then I'm gonna just keep nice polished aluminum um, on the hubs and the forks. Polish out that motor, we'll polish out the rear hub. But other than that, I'm gonna go with kind of, I don't know, there's colors in rhino lining too. Um, so I gotta look into all of that stuff or, you know, that rubberized stuff. What I, what I like about it is that uh, certain products that you buy, you can actually spray it on. It's super durable. Uh, I put it on a, helped a friend put some of that on one of his cars uh, uh, last summer, I think it was. And when he was getting rid of the car, he was able to just peel the stuff right off. And so it would actually just protect these original parts. So I'm kind of excited about that. My feed keeps cutting out. Oh man, I'm sorry about that. We may have a bandwidth issue here tonight. Have to pay attention to that. Thanks. If that keeps happening, um, do not hesitate to let me know. Yeah, T. So that seat came from Texavina. Texavina is where the uh, seat came from. T E X I V I N A. Um, they're manufactured out of Vietnam. I was a little skeptical of kind of what that was going to look like, but it's a super, super quality seat. Check out the seat over here. Oh, really nice seat. Give you a good look at that. It's really crafted extremely well. And the great thing about it is that the pan and everything is exactly what you would need. So the original hardware, like the hinge, the rear hinge on this one is going to bolt right up. It bolts right up to it. It is basically a perfect replica seat. I think they were about 200 bucks delivered, something like that. Um, but I love the low profile. And I think with like the black on this, it could look really, 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 really slick. So I hope we're not having too much of a problem here with uh, bandwidth tonight. Um, that would be a real bummer because we got all these parts to kind of dive into. I'm going to give you just a little bit of elevation here so you can see the rest of what's in the box. All right, more stickers. Hey, a new version of a sticker. I haven't seen the uh, black and gold version of the common motor. And this one you see quite often. They're like, you almost end up collecting. Um, I, I swear I have like a stack like this of common motor stickers. Any other ones hiding out in here? Any other ones? No. All good. All right, so we got stickers. There's my invoice. What else is in the box? Let's go in the box. All right, got a little fuel line. Gonna need that, right? Because uh, we're gonna need it eventually, and it's good to just have a hunk of fuel line. Now, I like the clear fuel line because I can actually see uh, glass <laughs> tea. Um, I might show you something tonight you might absolutely love. I'm actually working on a friend's bike right now, and it uh, basically just got painted. I'm gonna show, I might show you that stuff tonight. I might go on a little break and go grab those parts. We've got some fuel line, okay? So that's easy, easy. All right, picked out my grips because the grips are important. Boom. That's what I went with for the grips. A little shinier than I thought they would be. I was hoping they'd be a little bit more dull. But I love, I, I like the, the texture on these. I like how they're a little bit, they're, they, they have a little bit of a convex angle to them. They're going to look beautiful on this bike. Again, just going to line up with all of the black that we got going on with this thing. What else do I got? Another common motor sticker, common motor, hoorah. You guys are amazing. Love you guys. Every time I order, <laughs> I always order a new t-shirt. I always order a new t-shirt. I love these black and white logo freaking t-shirts, man. I just love them. They're super comfortable. And uh, I tell you what, I wear them out. I wear them out. I wear them a lot. And there's the shirt. All right. Oh, freebie. Freebie swag. We got ourselves an olive. An olive green. Oh, my God. And they came through for me. Common Motor came through for me again tonight. Got myself a little key ring. I've been kind of waiting to get one of these. I haven't gotten one of the key rings yet. So I got myself a Common Motor key ring. That can go on the ring. I love that. And this Two Hearted Ale, Bell's Brewery, can go slide right in to the nice new cozy. Just like that. Keep my beer nice and cold tonight while we dive in to some more parts. Kevin. Glad you caught a live stream, man. Welcome to the chat. We're going to have fun. We're just unboxing the latest stuff that I picked up from Common Motor just to get things kind of rolling. Now, there should be four of these. Picked up four spark plugs just because 
spark plugs are good to have. And I'm actually working on another bike off camera. Um, I, I kind of, I really want to show you these parts tonight because <laughs> I'm really excited about how it turns out and I cannot wait to install this stuff. So we've got the spark plugs that we need for these bikes. And again, these are from Common Motor, BR8ES5422s. All right, that's what they're selling. I trust Common Motor with what they are. And uh, there we go. So we've got spark plugs that we can deal with later on. What else? What else is in here? Ah, okay. So this was a last minute, um, I'm not done shopping, kind of a little splurge at the end, but I thought it could look pretty cool on the Apocalypse bike. <laughs> Got one of these funky uh, nets for the tank, right? So we freaking rhino line the tank and then we put one of these nets on it. It's gonna look freaking cool. I wonder if we can put that on there right now and just see see what it's gonna look like. Let me position this other camera and just see see what it's gonna look like. I think it's gonna look kind of cool, to be quite honest. I think it'll look kind of neat. Camera A, right there. Boom. All right, ooh. Why is this thing spinning around on me tonight? It's like that. What the hell? What in the world? Pardon the camera work, guys. Everything's all janky on me. Let's go back to camera B. And we will take a look at this net and see if it's as advertised, if it's actually gonna fit on this tank. Said it would fit on the CBs. So let's take a look here. All right. Oh, lost one of my hooks already. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think this is gonna look freaking cool. I'm gonna like put some branches on it. Camel your bike. I have to reach back over and do that. Pull that over there. Pull this one down here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this, guys. Slowly but surely, the apocalypse, the apocalypse bike is gonna come to life. Just so glad to be down in the shop tonight, getting some work done. Yeah. <laughs> Little ridiculous. But I'm telling you, if it's an apocalypse bike, if you need to slide something in there and, uh, you know, hold your, your buoy knife or whatever it is, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going off the rails with this, with this build for sure. I'm going off the rails with this bike for sure. Um, I'm having fun with this one. The last two bikes that I have dealt with, um, you know, I've been really, I've just been, you know, all natural, you know, going back to original, finding all the original parts. And honestly, I'm just kind of tired of kind of hunting down all these damn parts all the time because it, 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 it takes some effort to find this stuff, man. It, it, it really does. So, all right, we got the apocalypse spike. We got some of this stuff. We got the net, a couple extra hooks. We'll deal with that later. What else is in here? Not much. Oh, I got another one. I got another one for the black or the, the thing I'm gonna show you a little bit later. Um, so another one of those nets. And then I don't remember what the hell this was. Oh, these are just uh, the little clamps for the fuel line. So that's no big deal. And then this was the other, this was the, I totally forgot that I had ordered these. I hope they're a pair. I hope I read the description close enough, but I do hope that it is a pair. So cool to see the chat, guys. I, I just, this sure beats making videos all alone, man. Th thanks for joining in, T, Kevin. Roger, hope you're still there. Got myself some handlebar end mirrors for this. I'm kind of excited about these. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I think that they are gonna look pretty cool on the Apocalypse bike. And they are not plastic, guys. They're a little smaller than what I had anticipated, okay? A little bit smaller than what I had anticipated, but I think they're gonna look pretty damn cool on these. They're gonna pop out, beep, beep, just like that on these blacks. They're gonna pop out. It's gonna be really cool. Uh, T, I kept them. I still got both of my bikes. Still got the 1970 CB350, and I still have the 72 CL350. I've got both bikes. They're in my garage. 
and I am quickly, quickly, quickly running out of room. Uh, so decisions are going to have to be made um, this spring because hopefully this spring I'll have this bike ready to go and uh, we'll be good to go. Um, it's either that or I'm going to put an addition on my garage because <laughs> that would be cool. What's this? Oh, yeah, got a uh, Petcock rebuild kit. We got one of those as well. So there should be three pieces, I believe, inside the rebuild kit. Yeah, there's a little ring. Yep, yep, everything's right there. This little washer, this one right here, that one, man, I've ruined a bunch of those. So I'm going to be really careful when we install that. And then lastly, <clears throat> lastly, got myself some leak-proof classic forks, fork seals. I've got two sets of those because, again, I am working on a buddy's bike. On this bike, these are the old style KO. Um, hopefully, I, God, I hope I got the right ones. Yeah, CB350 through K3. They should be the right ones. I know I ordered the right ones. I will check to make sure. But these, I have the older style forks on my bike, so hopefully that those were gonna are gonna be good. It looks like CB350 through K3, so I think, yeah, those are right. And then sadly, that's the end of my box. That's the end of my box right now. Roger, you finished your Suzuki Marauder 125. Go get that annual safety inspection on the 24th, man. Go get it. Do you have a safety inspection? What country are you from again, Roger? Roger, why can't I ever remember where you're from? Are you the Aussie in the group? Are you the Aussie? I, I can't remember. Because in the U.S., we don't have anything like that. Um, I just got a title. I, got some, I paid the government for my tabs. And uh, they pretty much just left me alone. So this is a cool haul. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, so tonight I'm going to put in a set of seals so I can get rid of these. We don't need the fuel line. I don't think I'll get to the pet cot tonight. The fuel line I don't need. These handlebar ends, we might mock that up tonight. Get rid of this. Get rid of all this. Four spark plugs, which means that I'll have another bike, right? So there's going to be another bike in the future. I'll grab all of this stuff, my cool black sticker. We'll get that out of there. Handlebar grips. I'm just going to go ahead and put that stuff over here on the shelf and deal with this. Man, these are these are a win right here, guys. These are a win right here. What year is that Suzuki, Roger? What year is that? Aren't those pretty, guys? Those are pretty. I'm so glad that I went with the black on those. I just think it's just going to be something different to do. Now, what do you guys see down on the table? We got our forks sitting out on the table. In the UK, Mott Test, Ministry of Transport. Okay. Well, good luck with your test. Pass your test, man. Get that bike back on the road. Get that bike back on the road. 2011. Nice. Nice. And I want to see, I wish that we could share pictures on this thing. That's the only thing that kind of kind of drives me a little bit bonkers on this stuff is that you know we can't share photos with each other because there's there's so much that we could be like sharing with each other right and saying well look at my project or look what i'm doing um, i think that would be freaking cool as hell to be able to do that all right i think i got my camera thing squared away so we can go back to camera a and give you a little bit different look at what is going on here Tonight, the goal, honestly, and uh, tonight, ah, uh, Facebook group. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Hey, Joe's back. Hey, Joe. Just wanted to thank you for showing us how to rebuild a carburetor. I got my Crock-Pot, a.k.a. ultrasonic machine, yesterday. Awesome, dude. <laughs> I hope you have really good luck um, with cleaning yours out. I still need to go back and clean these... Uh, the carburetors, they're sitting back there yet. I still need to go through and, and do the simple green kind of thing. Um, glad you got that. Um, that's freaking cool as hell, dude. Good luck. I love it. And they're so useful for so many other things, too. I mean, it's not just motorcycles. I mean, the ultrasonic cleaners are, I don't know, they're just useful for no matter whatever it is you're working on. There, there's a process. There's stuff that you can do with all that 
stuff. Uh, the other thing too, guys, I just love, just love this. Which camera? Dude, I'm sitting here and people are watching the videos and leaving comments. Like somebody just watched one. Stellar tutorial, man. Great of you to share. You know, it's, it's awesome. And like even when I make mistakes in the videos, uh, people applaud that too. <laughs> Roger, great idea on the Facebook group. Okay, these forks have already been drained, if I remember correctly. <laughs> 10 millimeter wrench down here will take out your drain plug right here, okay? Just right here, it's a 10 millimeter. I'm pretty sure I drained it. I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure I did. Oh, I dropped it. Dropped the most important part here. So you're gonna have a screw or a bolt and then there's a little copper washer, okay? Do not lose that copper washer. That's gonna be important, okay? That kind of seals everything up. I'm gonna get a little bin just in case. I did not do that. Thought I did. I thought I did. Ooh. <laughs> um, maybe not. Oh yeah, I think I got most of it out of there. Yeah, I think we got most of it out of there. I think we're good. Phew, because <laughs> that would have been a freaking mess. Yeah, Facebook group. I never thought of that. That would be actually really kind of fun. All right, let's dive into these things. Let's get this over with. All right, first things first. Uh, let's tackle the hardest part first, or the part that just kind of can be very, very, very tedious. I'm going to get you down low. So you guys can see a little bit better about what we're doing. We need to get this bolt out of the bottom of these forks. And sometimes they can be really, really, really stubborn to get at. So we're gonna pull off our bottom clamp, just like that. And down inside here, see down there, right here, there's gonna be a bolt, all right? Weirdly, Huh, weird. The bottom of these are actually JIS. Now I had bought a special, what size was this? It doesn't even say on here. What the hell size was this? I went and spot, bought a special tool right here um, to take these out because I thought that they were like a 14, no a six, looks like it says six on it. A six millimeter, but it's not. These have JIS. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my JIS screwdrivers. Do not put Phillips screwdrivers in this stuff, guys. You'll wreck it. You will wreck this stuff. And just to be care, just to try get the best effort, I'm gonna throw a little bit of uh, deep creep. Deep creep is if you're disassembling, in my opinion, it, it is a little superior to WD-40. Okay, if you're doing some light stuff, um, WD-40 works just fine. But if you really got to get into some stuff, I think the deep creep is definitely working just a little bit better. So I hope I don't have to put this in a vise tonight, but we'll see. We'll get this in here, see if I can give you a shot at this. Uh, that screw is already kind of mangled up. I can already see it. What is going on there? What in the world is going on here? That, that's gonna be a problem. Oh my God. So this bottom screw is already completely jammed up. That sucks. All right, let's move over to this one. Maybe we'll get better luck on this one. So again, we'll come over here. We'll take this clasp off. What's everybody else working on? We can all congratulate Roger on the Suzuki Marauder, the 125, which is going to pass its annual safety inspection on the 24th. I can feel it. I can feel it. I feel like he did everything right. And we're going to go in here again, down in here. This is a little bit too small of a GIS. If it moves or jiggles at all, move up a size in your GIS. All right. Oh, this one, this one opened right up. I'm actually really surprised. This other one's got me really, really, this other one's got me a little concerned because 
it's a mess. I'll try to give you a good look at what's going on there. But what you want to do is you want to take this bolt out. I don't remember how damn long-winded it was or not. Hopefully, the whole shaft isn't spinning on us. There we go. Let's just, let's just start cleaning stuff out of here. All right, guys. All right. Pull the spring straight off, okay? Inside your spring, there's a little sleeve. Here's this little rubber kind of plastic sleeve. This is in here. I'm not even going to try to get it out. I'm just going to leave it for now, but we don't need that right now. So we'll put that away and see if we can start getting this thing apart. Man, I am finding all kinds of weirdness on this bike, man. I do not see a snap ring on here. There is no, there should be a snap ring inside here. I don't see any of, any of that. Kevin, plugging away on a 71 CL 350. Oh man, the video series. I hope it's helpful to you. Hope you're having fun with that. Man, that was such a fun build. There should be a snap ring on the end here and I am not seeing it. I'm gonna be able to drive this out. That is not how this is supposed to work. So again, so I bought this bike as like a partial uh, restore. Somebody had started it. They got in a little too deep. I think they realized that they were in a little deep and I think they just threw stuff back together and sold me this bike. So um, this should not do this. Look at this. I'm just going like, boom, there it is. There is no snap ring. Now this looks like a brand new, this looks like a brand new seal, but it is really cheap. That is not how that's supposed to be. This is not how this is supposed to be. Okay, so this is some sort of a dust cover. I haven't seen this before. 77 XT 500T. I don't know, man. That's a pretty cool bike, too. This is different, man. This is different. Now, down below here, there is a snap ring. So it's some sort of a dust boot that I have not seen before, guys. All right. Keep in mind, you know, this is now my my third motorcycle. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, Roger. I'm going to show you what the problem is. If I have a problem, I will definitely use an impact driver. But uh, I, I will uh, show you what the problem is on this other one over here in just a second. Um, I haven't seen this before. So that's going to be some research. We're going to have to look at it. We're going to have to go to our old school snap ring pliers. Okay, guys? You're going to need these if you're working on these bikes. If you haven't picked up a set, get a set. Um, the other thing I would say about snap ring pliers, buy a good set. I went to like my local auto store and I bought like a 10 US dollar set and uh, they bent and, and got all janked up right away. So under here, there's a snap ring deep down inside of here that I need to try and finagle and get at. Let me get my snap ring pliers. You are going to need a set if you are working on these bikes. You are going to need a set. Makes me wonder if these similarly have been replaced. I'm not sure. That one seal looked really fresh, though. Oh, got half of it. Yeah, I'm just not really feeling really good about kind of the level of work that I've been seeing on this bike so far. On, like, everything I've been looking at so far. <laughs> I think... Uh, I don't think that things were done quite correctly. Could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm definitely always learning as well. Yeah, like this snap ring is in here kind of crooked. It's kind of bent. The one thing about... Yeah, this thing... It's all bent out of shape, man. Like, that is not right. That snap ring should pop right off. Let's get this one out. See if I can get this out. Yeah, that one I'm not going to be able to move because, yeah, this is all janked up, guys. Hmm. This is not cool. But I tell you what, I'm glad that I have the experience that I do from 
the first two bikes because you know, some, some, you know, I might just think that this is how it's supposed to be, right? And then I would put it together all wrong. Yeah, this is like in there all crooked, like. Man, who does that? I really don't want to, ah, oh, there we go, I got it. Just had to get around it just, just enough. So there's our snap ring. Again, if you don't know what a snap ring is, that's what they are. They snap, they expand and contract, and they snap and hold things together. Basically, it's just a little ridge. Now, let's see. I'm not, con oh yeah, I think I got that, that screw, that screw turned. That screw is in here. I think I got it all the way out for sure. So we'll try and get this out. There we go, hit it. <laughs> Grab my little knife here, see if I can pull that out of there. It's, de it's definitely not connected anymore. At least I don't think it is. It's super loose. It's like that. There. Just pull that bad boy apart. Just like that. And guys, this is a brand new seal. There's a brand new seal. On this. Just like that. Interesting. So this guy did some stuff to this bike. Interestingly. All right. Man, I wish he would have gave me a list of all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man. Old bikes are always a challenge. Too many years of people using incorrect tools, mangling stuff. Circlips. All right. Yeah, circlips. We can, we can call them that on the channel, too. I've, they've always been snap rings, I guess, in, in, my, in, in my world. Um, these actually look really, really good though. Um, nice and smooth, not a lot of pitting, very, very smooth operation. And this does look like to me a brand new seal. So I'm just going to carefully pull this off. I have new seals that I probably am going to put in myself anyway, but I would say that those are brand new. I would say that those are brand new. So somebody did the front seal. I've just never seen this part before. You guys ever see this part? I've never seen this portion of this. Um, so that's a little bit different. And that's really as far as we need to go on this. We can take this off, because what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna polish these for sure. I like the old style forks, these older style forks for sure. They're way easier to work on, I think, than the, um, the uh, internal spring ones. The 72 had had the internal spring. These are the older style. These have the external spring. Let's see if we can get this off. So far, so good. That's a little puzzling, though. Boy, and it, dude, look at this. So this, if you look real close, it's actually cross-threaded. It's cross-threaded just a little bit. I can see it when I'm looking down on it, directly down on it. <sighs> yeah, just kind of par for the course on this bike, man. This bike is going to be a challenge for sure. But yeah, it's totally kind of kitty wumpus when I'm when I'm taking it off here. I can see it like spinning side to side. Feels like it's a little bit cross-threaded. Is that a deal breaker? I don't know. I don't know, man. Oh, yeah, there's... What the hell was that? No. Something else fell out of here. Oh, there's the rubber. Oh, that's what it was. It wasn't cross-threaded, guys. The guy... God, this is, this is amazing. So, here's the rubber O-ring. That actually is supposed to seal the top of the fork. Okay, it's supposed to sit here just like that. Right in that groove right there. And uh, when they put that bolt on, what was messing it up, making me think it was cross-threaded, is because this thing got down into the, into the threads. And it's all cut to hell. And that's going to be another goddamn $5 that I'm going to have to find to replace this little rubber O-ring that went down in, into there. You believe that? <sighs> all right. Well, maybe let's see if they did this other one right. Let's see if this other one wasn't done quite as dirty 
as the as this one was. Yeah, that's you know, looking at this. This is bent. This is bent. It wasn't just my eyes. I think you guys can see how bent that is on camera. Can't you? You guys see that? Let me go to camera B. Give you a good look. See that? You guys see how bent that is? Look at that. Look at that. Totally bent. Come on, man. Yeah, okay. I thought it looked like it was wobbling side to side. So, yeah, great. Oh, yeah, I didn't quite get that all the way off. But, okay, so there's a little bar inside. Oh, got to go back over here. There's a little bar inside here. I'm not convinced that these are are put together correctly at all. Um, I might have to go back into the manuals. There. Now we got it. Here's this. Yeah, so this is that connector. This is what people struggle with all the time. Because this screw actually goes in to the end of this pole. And a lot of people really struggle with it because this pole is spinning around down there. And there's no way for you to ever really take it out. All right. Well, adventures in babysitting, I guess. Looks really clean inside. Doesn't look bad. That'll, we'll be able to wipe that out. That's pretty much all you should have to do in there is wipe it out. For now, we'll just throw that back in there like that. And yeah. <laughs> Already, you know, I can just feel the cash register just bing, ching, ching, ching. Brian, you need this part. You need this part. Now you need this part. Now you got to buy this part. And every part, I don't care how small a part is. You know, I, I bet this O-ring, this O-ring on this part, it's probably going to be 10 bucks by the time it gets shipped to my house. 10 bucks for that little piece of rubber that somebody didn't pay attention to enough to not... Like, how do you even do that? It rests in this groove. It, it rests down in the groove, guys. How do you do that? How do you do that? I don't know. I don't know how people do that. All right, well, let's see if this one's all bent to hell, too. See if this one's bent. Let's see if the... Uh, I, I'd love to show you an example of what it's supposed to look like. That would be beneficial to you, right? I, I You know, I, I hope you guys are hanging out on the stream because, you know, you just kind of like hanging out in a shop or maybe you can't be in a shop. And uh, you, we're just kind of enjoying some time together. I, I'm not sure how much you're actually going to learn <laughs> from the stream. Uh, this one looks okay. This one is, this is how it's supposed to be. That rubber O-ring is slid, is slid right in there just like that. And there is no reason for that to get caught. That one's in good shape. And this one doesn't look like it's bent. This one looks like it's bent too. Am I? It looks like it's bent to me. How that would happen? Are they naturally bent? I don't believe they are. I don't believe they are. But yeah, they both, see? Hold them side to side. And they got this little bend to them. This one especially. Huh. I'm a, I got another set of forks. I might tear it into those here tonight too. Because now... I'm bloody interested to see what's going on there. Okay, so then this one's got a dust seal on it. Okay, so maybe the dust seal is legit. Okay, maybe maybe the dust seal is legit, and it's just not something that that I've really dealt with before. But that just kind of pries right out of there. Okay, I don't. I remember these these rings. I remember having these, but they went on top of the seal. I'll have to double check. But there's that. And here's the problem. Man, how can I show you that? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try this, and we'll see if this actually works. I'm going to take a picture of it. And I'm going to try to show you. Turn on my flash. So you can really see what's going on here.
That's the problem. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a little bit of a problem. See that? You guys see that okay? Should be able to. It is really smushed up. I mean, that's really smashed up. That's almost like somebody took a non-GIS impact driver to it or something. There ain't no way in hell I'm getting that out. Yeah, there ain't no way. That is going to be a project for another day. All right. Let's see. Let's take our snap ring out. Let's see if we can get this thing apart. That's crazy. That's not the way it's supposed to go. All right. Oh, I got to give you a little elevation, guys. Oh, wait. Maybe I can just change and do this. Boom. Look at that. It's almost like I planned that. Then we can put this on here like that. And try to get our snap ring out of here. Or circlip, excuse me. That's what we're calling them now, right? Circlip? Yeah. You know, I thought the forks were going to be easy tonight. I was like, oh, that'd be a nice, easy thing to do. No. No dice. Oh, man. There is something weird. There we go. Oh, I had it. I had it. I had it there for just a second. Uh, I might wonder if it's just the point on my extractor tool might be just a little too small. Kevin, awesome. Thank you for stopping by, man. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, it's awesome to see you in the chat, hanging out, kind of going through this adventure together. I really do enjoy the chat. This, this stuff gets kind of lonely sometimes, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you guys know, right? We're probably all kind of secretly antisocial. So we don't mind it so much until those moments when we get sad. Yeah, I don't have a different... Wait, I do. So this thing has some a little bit bigger ends on it. I'm wondering if I could put those on. See if that would help my cause any. So where's the other one? Oh, there's the other one. Cool. So these all come out. And you can just kind of hot swap them. I'm going to try this bigger bigger end on it. See if that makes any difference. I would assume it would. Probably just using the wrong tool for the job. Now, if it comes out right away, I feel like we've really accomplished something tonight. No, it's just like jammed in there. It's really an awkward situation. And I'd like to get this free. There we go. Oh, I had it. I had it, guys. I freaking had it. Oh, I had it. You've all been there. I know you all have been there. You've all done this stuff. We've all done this. We've been there, done that. Come on. Downward pressure. Yeah, it's just right down up against that edge. It's a toughie. It's a toughie. It's not being too friendly. Oh, boy. Boy, go oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, I had it. I had it again. That's the third time I had it. And then I got excited. And then it moved. I wonder if I can pull that out. No. No, that's just what I got to work with here. All right. Come on, man. Come on, man. What is it, Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday. I don't know why I chose to go live. Oh, I know why I chose to go live. Oh, I got it. 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 Perfect. All right. So those are going to be fine. There we go. That one's going to come out. There's some gritty grit inside of this. I'm not too happy to see that. Look how dirty that is, guys. That's not what you want in there. This part has to be really smooth, really clean. So we're gonna have to clean this up. There's some gritty grit in here. Now this, again, does look to be a new seal. 
Again, be careful with these seals, man. You don't want to scratch these up or anything. Again, I got another set. But there's some dirt. There's some dirt and grime inside of here. So we're going to want to make sure that we clean this up. Really, really good. Yeah, and inside the pipe. Yeah, you guys won't be able to see that. But I'm going to push something through here in a second. You're going to see how filthy that is. Was this one as dirty? Not as bad. Boy, this, this one was was real bad. Really, really filthy. Now we got this issue because we got that really busted up bolt down there. Whoa! The dirt down inside of here? Insane. Insane amount of dirt. Alright. So, typically when you run across a bolt or something that is stripped out like that, remember, this is what it looked like. Um, do -do 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 -do. That's what it looked like. Did I give you a real good look there? Oh, light, light in the way. I would take my Dremel tool and uh, cut a notch in it. But I'm not sure how I'd be able to do that. I wonder if I could do that. Kenji, working on a KZ440 today. I put everything back together and ran the bike. The gases from the engine started to push back into the carb boots and shot out the side. Do you think it could be valves? Out of the carb boots. <sighs> Start to push back. Yeah, that shouldn't be pushing back. And you see, and you check the check your valve clearance. Check your valve clearance on that. Make make sure you adjusted all that right. Anybody in the chat know maybe what that could be? That sounds like a major, major scary, scary thing, actually. Yeah, there is no, it's almost like, this bad boy almost looks like it has been, like, touched by a welder. Kenji, love your videos, by the way. It's gotten me through a lot since I'm a novice at anything that has to do with bikes. Dude, I'm kind of a novice. I mean, again, this is my third bike. Um, I, I'm not sure what I would do if gases from the engine started to push back into the carb boots and shoot out of the side. That is interesting. I don't know. I hope somebody in the chat can can help with that. It's got to be valves. If it's, it's not exhausting, it'd be like your exhaust valves maybe. I would start with valves. I think you're on the right track. How the hell are we going to get this apart? Because we got to get it apart. Because this has to be cleaned. If you could see how filthy this is. If you could see. Hey, there's Roger. I knew somebody would come in. Valve timing is out probably. Did you grind the valves in? Yeah, lapping the valves. Did you lap the valves? Did you do a top end rebuild? How the hell am I going to attack this, guys? How the hell am I going to attack that? Huh, 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 huh. What am I going to do here, guys? I did not anticipate this problem on tonight's stream. I mean, it's crazy. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, there you can kind of see it. You can see exactly what I'm looking at. There is no head from which to extract from. I wouldn't be lucky enough to maybe get like a needle nose around it, but I don't want to scratch this shaft on this because this has to be pretty smooth. I mean, it's not super smooth. It's kind of smooth. Hmm. Wow. What are we going to do with this, guys? What are we going to do? I'm going to see. No. Nope, that ain't going anywhere. This is a challenge. That's what I would call that. Let me move, I gotta move some stuff. Cause I do have another set. I got another set. Hang with me guys, I got another set back here. Now, 
these ones are going to be scary. These, these are going to be really scary, okay? Because this bike went through a fire, a house fire. <laughs> I know how to pick them. We got another set of forks right here. And we might be able to just salvage one of these ends. Like check, oh my God, you gotta see this. I gotta put this on camera. This is what a, a bike looks like when it comes out of a, comes out of a fire. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that nuts? I mean, it could be, uh, like, I don't know, Roger, just kind of spitballing here. Like, could it be, like, out of sync? So, like, maybe we were, you were on, you know, the left side. Oh, I need one of these. I actually need one of these. I was missing one of these. So I found one. That's great. Um, like, could it be that, like, the valves were adjusted with the engine in the opposite? So, like, on the, if you're trying to adjust the left, the you were actually on... You know, if you're trying to adjust the right, that you're actually on top on left, it'd be something like that. I know that almost got me once. All right, God, look at this mess that we're dealing with here. Oh, man. I, I did not anticipate getting into this tonight. But we're going to do it because we got kind of got to do it. We kind of got to do it, guys. We got to dive into this. I gotta figure this out. So I'm gonna need a looks like it's gonna be a 12 or a 14 socket. Mm, man, not what I wanted to be getting into. Not what I wanted to be getting into tonight. For sure. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these wrenches because I'm probably gonna need them. What is it? I was right the first try, 12, it's a 12. Chances, that's never gonna turn. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if these, I wonder if the, I wonder if the O-rings are on this though. Look at that, this guy didn't put the damn uh, things inside of here. There we go, there's a rubber O-ring. I'm gonna replace that, we got an extra one of those, that's nice. Isn't that nice? See if this one's good, go over here. See if this one's good or not. Lap and grind the valves. That's a big job. I think on the on the Honda Twins, I, I don't think can I don't think you could do that with the engine in the bike. I could be wrong, but I don't think you I don't think there's room to pull the top on it. Yeah, I think you'd have to pull the motor on a Honda. I don't I don't know about that particular bike, the KZ440. I have no idea. Oh, guys. I mean, this is just kind of how it goes, you know? I mean, working on these old, these old bikes, you're going to run into this stuff. And I got to try and find my 12 millimeter. I would love to find that in three quarter too, so I have a little bit more leverage. There's my 12. Uh, I don't think, I, I don't think this is gonna go. Let's get violent. Oh, there's that sound, that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sound. We got it, can we get lucky on this one? Can we get lucky over on this one too? Wouldn't that be something? Let's see what'd be the easiest way for me to go. Let's go this way. Yeah, that one went. Just needed the right tool. Kenji, <coughs> it definitely sounds like something's up in the motor if it's doing that. That blows. Sorry, brother. Sorry about that. All right. So I got another tr uh, bottom fork, which is good. All right. God damn. Are the is this even going to come apart? This ain't going to come apart. There's no way. <laughs> there is no way in hell. 
that this is coming apart. Well, it might, it, it might come apart. Okay, I gotta get, I gotta clear a little room here. I gotta move the camera. I gotta get this out of the way. I gotta move some of this stuff here. I got a cool surprise here in this, in these bins over here. I wanna show you tonight too. I got something kind of cool cooking up over here. All right, so that would be, I gotta keep these organized. So there's that one. Let's get these out of the way. I thought this was just gonna be easy, guys. I thought this was gonna be real easy tonight. Let's just do a new seals in the forks. Nope. Turned into a thing. Turning into a thing. All right, so it's turning. Hey, yep, they're gonna come out. All right, cool. This needed to come apart anyway. It's all good. Little metal ring there. God, look at how, look at how. That's what fire will do, guys. You know, I would try the timing thing first before you go pull the motor. Um, the timing could be right but or, or wrong but i don't know that seems seems weird okay we're we gonna get lucky on both of these guys are we gonna get lucky on both of these oh god oh my goodness we got it we got it got it nice all right we're getting messy we're <laughs> we're, we're getting messy Roger is the resident expert tonight. We're so glad he's here with us as we muddle our way through this thing called motorcycle restoration. It is not for the faint of heart, and it is definitely not for the impatient. Now here, this looks to be in good condition yet. So we got an extra one of those, which is great. We'll put that back on the shelf. And now what I wanna see, what I want to see, now there is a slight difference in your left and right. Okay. Yes, perfect example. On one of your forks, both of these bolts are gonna be the same size, okay? They're gonna be the both size, the same size. And on one of them, one's going to be a little bit bigger than the other, and this is where your brake stay goes, okay? That metal bar, that metal bar, I don't know where the hell my metal bar is. Oh, I see it. Let me go grab it. I'll show it to you so you know what I'm talking about. That is where your front brake stay is going to go. goes on to this bigger one right here, okay? That's gonna hold your brake in. Here, I'll give you a little better look. Okay, it's a bigger one. So, what I'm gonna to attempt to do is to remember. Whoa! I'm discovering more how how messed up this bike is. Here we go. This is totally busted off. There is a busted bolt inside of that. This has been terrible yeah if you're running points i would highly recommend that you fucking go to or excuse me i apologize i would highly recommend that you go to an electronic ignition so this is really this one has been through hell and back not only is this like this but this is broke off here so this is kind of junk right now that's why you got to look at these old parts man you got to look at this stuff kenji what do you know what are you running? You're running points or electronic ignition? This is junk. But this is telling me that I need the one with the same. So this would be my new one. Never give up, Kenji. Never give up. We don't give up here. I keep on wrenching. We don't, we don't give up. We just keep going. We just keep on going. Okay, I'm going to need the impact driver on this one for sure. Now, let's see. So this one's okay. This is the good one. I'm gonna go ahead and chuck the bad one down here. That one's bad. Now, could it be fixed? Absolutely. 
Is it going to be fixed tonight? No. No, it will not. Okay, we do not need this one, so I'll put this one, get this one out of the way. Put that there. And now what we need to do is Brian needs to remember whether or not he drained this fork. Did I drain this fork? I don't remember doing it. I, I really don't. I do not remember doing it. So take that 10 millimeter bolt out the top, out the bottom end here. Oh man. And we'll see here. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so glad that I didn't take this thing apart. Cause that's some old four coil. Oh my God, it looks like, looks like freaking Play-Doh coming out of there. Uh, yeah, Roger. That's maybe one of my challenges on this bike is to actually get points running good. Cause on my uh, CB, my 1970 CB, I had so much trouble with my points that I just gave up and bought a $200 electronic ignition. And uh, in a couple hours, I was going down the road. Oh man, disgusto, disgusting. This is some old, nasty stuff from here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guys, this show, uh, whatever the hell you want to call it, this live stream, this is not scripted. This is not scripted in any way, man. I'm really glad I did that. Look at that. That is not what fork oil should look like. That's not what it should be looking like, guys. That's not fork oil. That's a monstrosity. That's disgusting. So I'm going to put this back in there now. All right. So we got to get this all apart here. Let's grab my little knife here. and let's Let's do some cutting on this. See if I can cut myself live on stream. There ain't no saving these boots. So I'm just gonna save myself a little time and pry these off of here. Cause I don't think we can save that. I mean, we've done some cool stuff, but. Quite possible. Yeah. Let's see, too small a plug gap. Ooh, goddamn, Roger! Just freaking coming in, and he comes in with a left hook, right jab, over the top. More information coming in. I did notice on. Oh my god, these are these are so disgusting, guys. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, spark plug gap does matter um, on my seventy. Uh, that was an issue that I that I had, and once I remedied that, um, things did get better. All right, these are disgusting. These springs are all rusted. I'm not. I mean, we could put them in a vapor rust. There's a nice spider nest right there. No spiders at home though. Yeah, those are pretty bad. Again, this has been through a fire. This one. All right, let's get inside here. See if we can find the snap ring. Or maybe we'll see if there's a cover here. Should be just a snap ring though. No, <clears throat> that went right in my mouth. It went right in my mouth, guys, the rust. Yeah, it looks like there is a little, there is a little dust seal here, guys. All right, there's that dust seal, just like from the other one. This, I'm gonna put the fire pieces over there though. And let's see if there's a little washer in here covering up our snap ring. Man, I feel like an archeologist right now. Yeah, that washer is actually coming out in pieces so the, the, that's just rusted out. Oh man, I did not think that I was gonna get into this tonight. This is a nice, easy stream. It'll be easy. I probably jinxed myself right off the bat just by having that thought in my head. Screwed myself. 
the one thing that I do wish that I had down in the shop was a vice. Because I can tell a vice is going to be very useful as I try my darndest to get this thing apart tonight. I'm not even seeing the snap ring. Because of the snap ring, or the, the circlip, could have the circlip just rot, rusted away underneath here. I mean, this is all rust. It's all rust. Like, I got rust all over myself now. Come on, man. Come on, man. What a mess. Oh, man. Yeah, these are total trash. So this is what you don't want to see if you're working on your forks. See that? See that damage? That's a big old chunk. I'm going to show you that. Big old gash. This is junk. This is junk. That that is all that that's a good millimeter deep at least. This little this this has to be riding smooth. This the top end of your of the fork. This can be kind of crusty, but that can't. <clears throat> I cleaned it up just a little bit, but man, I do not see a ring in there. Go to the trusty dental pick, see what we can find. I love that sound. I'm one of the crazy people. I love the dentist. I love going to the dentist. I think in another life I would have been a dentist. Or if I could go back, I might go and be a dentist. Who knows? Maybe I'll go be a dentist. Maybe I could just go and do that. Man. Yeah. It's garbage, man. Garbage. But I am going to try to hit it with my impact. Let's see if we can get it. Let's see if we can pop it. We really only need, we just need to pop one. We just need to get the bottom. I'll grab my impact. This one should do the trick. And let me see. Let's move this one over here. Let's call it camera B. Just like that. So where can I do this? Can I do it right? Where can I do this? Gotta go over here. All right, we'll go right here. Grab my impact, push that bad boy down, and let's hope. It's gonna be, uh, oh, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, I'm gonna need a vice. Gonna need a vice, it's gonna turn on me. No matter what. No, I got it. Holy crap. I got it. I got it. I got it, guys. Can't believe it. I got it. That bugger turned. Can you believe that? Yeah, Kenji. It's like that last, those rabbit holes you gotta go down. Oh, here we go. To get her done. See if I got this. These buggers are a booger. Got her turning though. Now it's just a matter of getting it turned out enough. Then we can get this thing out. That's really weird though to have gases coming out of your car boots. Oh yeah, I got all kinds of oil. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Oh boy, guys. Guys, this isn't fun. Are you guys enjoying this? Y'all just sitting back, just, you know, enjoying <laughs> what is going on here? I mean, I feel like we can definitely all relate, you know, to this madness. I don't know why we do this to ourselves. There we go. I feel like it's really, I feel like it's there. I just want the aluminum piece. That's all I want. I don't really care about anything else on this. I just want this. 
But again, I do not see, I do not see. Yeah, Roger, impacts are freaking godsend. But I also don't want to be messing up any of these seals here. Or like, you know, how smooth. I don't want to be messing up this interior wall here with that crusty, uh, that really banged up deal there. Um, I do not see, I do not see a circlip in here. And it's just rust. This is all just straight up rust. I think I almost feel like it's just disintegrated and it's gone. All right, we're going to relieve pressure on this just so this thing can breathe a little bit. <laughs> Roger, good. <laughs> I'm glad that that's how it's working. Whoa, I just shot four coil a good 10 feet across my shot. Yeah, I'm in trouble here, guys. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble here. Oh, come on. Yeah, we're in trouble here, guys. This just ain't going to do it. This is the part I need, and it is being... Real fussy. Super fussy. See if we can try this again. Because if you ain't got this bottom screw out, if you ain't got it out, oh, I got it. I think I got it. Yes! Oh, yes, 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 we got that one. We got it. We got it out. Oh, I love that. Okay, that's a huge win. Okay. Right. Now, if I could only see, there is not, there is not, I do not see, I do not see, one of those clips in here, I just don't see it, I don't see it. I think is that maybe that fire has maybe put up a little bit of an obstacle for us tonight. Yeah, that's not aluminum. What's that edge look like? Yeah, it's way bigger than that. I feel like the seal is there. I'm just trying to see if I can see like the groove where that clip would have went just to see I feel like I feel like it's not there because if I look at this it's low it's down in there okay wow wow who knew it was gonna be like this tonight guys sorry about that here I thought we were gonna be all, all victorious and stuff. Yeah, and I just don't want this going back in there because I can feel how it's, it's all bashed in. This is really tough, guys. This is this is tough. I'm kind of on the give up to fight another day kind of spot right now. So I can't. If I can't get this out, like it could be this metal washer, but I don't feel like it is. I could be wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's just literally, oh, oh, oh my God. Persistence pays off, guys. Look at that. Look at that. Here's that, oh, no. <laughs> Here's that washer. Look at that. Look at that trash. 
All right, now we can dive into here and see if we can find a clip. Uh, oh my God, this has gotten way messier than I thought too. Way messier than I thought we were gonna get tonight. I got lucky on my first two um, fork seal replacements, apparently. Because, yeah, it looks like to me. Whoa. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to knock you over. Sorry about that. That was a crazy ride, guys. Sorry about that. So, yeah, how can I show you this, man? So now we're down a little bit deeper here. And I'm just trying to clean this out to see if I can find that circlip. I don't think there's going to be much of a circlip left, is my guess. Because right here, I'm in rubber right here. I can feel that that's rubber. Oh, no, nope, there is a circlip there. It's right there. I am actually, I should have a bottle of water here. Try to spray this out. Just so I can see just a little bit better. Knock out some of the big chunks. Because there's some big chunks in there of just garbage. I say earlier I said uh, patience right these are projects for people who are really patient ah, I see it I see there is no way there is no way no way no way I'm gonna be able to get that out though how the hell am I gonna get that out I see one end of the uh, circlip it's right there the other end's got to be here. Yeah, there it is. I found it. But shit, I, I was barely able to get brake cleaner. Yeah, that might work, Andrew. Got to get something a little bit better in there. I found the clip, though. The clip is in there. Hey, hey, that's Murphy in the background. He hears me struggling. He's like, hey, you need some support, bro. I got you. Let's wipe this out just a little bit. Shot of brake cleaner does wonders on the forks. Yeah. All right, so where the hell was that now? It's tough to, it's really tough to show you guys. Like when I was shooting the videos, it was always, you know, kind of a, a fun challenge. Here's my clip. It's right down here. It's way down in there. But man, I, I have this feeling, I have this terrible feeling that it's going to be like fused. You know, just like this whole thing. So now I got to find it again. There it is. It's right there. It is right there. I can see it. Oh, man. If we get this out... It's a miracle. I'll take a shot of Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels whiskey if we get this thing out. I don't think we will. I don't think we will, man. This thing, it's so corroded. It's rotted out. Good thing aluminum doesn't rust, huh? All right, there. I got it here. Just hook that. Where's the other one? Man. Yeah, there they are. There's both the both of the holes. I got those both exposed. I got them both cleaned out right now. Just trying to figure out. You may need to cut the sanction off flush with the leg 
and degrind it. Yeah. I may. I think may is the key word there for sure. I'm doubtful. That that sadly would have to wait for another day. My grinder's up in the garage. Just trying to get the holes kind of exposed right now. So we can give it the good college try at least tonight. Man. What a bummer. It's never easy, guys. It's never as easy as you think it's going to be. Lesson of the night. I hate, I hate failing at things. You know, I, I hate, I just hate it when it doesn't work out. And you go to bed kind of stewing, you know, kind of stewing about it, kind of wondering what could have been, what kind of glory could have we have found today. And I got it, I got it, it's in. See, I don't know, guys. If I'm a betting man, I ain't betting on myself right now. I ain't betting on myself right now. This is tough. This is tough. Hmm. We are so close, but we are so damn far, too. <laughs> One circlip away from glory. One sir clip away from glory, guys. One. <sighs> Let's take a break. I'm going to enjoy my new common motor koozie that I got with all my new parts. I'm excited. We're just going to take a break. Sometimes you got to just take a break. And, uh, hey, you know what? While we take a break, I'm going to spray some deep creep in here. And just let this sit for a little while. Fill that thing up, just like that. I'll just hold it. I'll just hold. No, I'm not gonna hold it. You know what I? You know what I can do right now? I'm gonna set this down. Let that all kind of penetrate in there. I'm gonna show you my garage sale find. That's what I want to show you. My freaking garage sale find of a century. Yeah. I really just need this one. I really just need the one part, Roger. I, it'd be really nice to get that one end. But I want to show you guys what I found. I was at a garage sale this last weekend. And look what I found. I found a wheel chewing kit. Andrew, it's soaking in PB Blaster. I'm on it. Uh, for the night... You're right. You're right. Got to be patient, Andrew. Good call. Thank you. Look at this. Tanaka Tool Company. Japan. <laughs> Made in Japan. Tanaka Tool Company. Wheel chewing stand. How freaking cool is this? I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to try. I'm going to learn how to chew a wheel. I'm gonna learn how to true a wheel. 25 bucks. This is a very, very cool vintage tool. Uh, the guy told me that it was from the 1960s and that it came out of a Honda motorcycle shop. That's what he told me. And I mean, because it's Tanaka Tool Company Japan, I'm kind of in favor of believing that. It is vintage, it is cast iron. This thing weighs weighs a nice nice uh nice bit. Yeah, Andrew, and this is freaking cool. And then he threw in a tire balancer for free, for free on the on the side of it. Um, so I've got my tire bat, my wheel balancer here, and I've got my chewing stand now in the shop as well. Man, this this thing is just freaking cool, Nagoya, whatever that means. But I'm gonna be watching all kinds of stuff trying to figure out. You know how to use this properly um but i don't know even even if it just sits here and looks cool i'm kind of happy with it 
just the whole made in Japan and I work on Honda motorcycles and, and all of that. I just think it is really, really, really something else. So you put your wheel in here, you know, tighten up, get your wheel in here and you can move this into position just like that. And I can tighten this and then as you spin your wheel and you're spinning your wheel, you can watch it true right here. Make sure it's staying level here and here. I generally understand how it works. I generally understand. Yeah, heat. Heat might work too. Heat would work too, Roger. You're totally right. My heat gun again, that's out in the garage too. Can't get into that. Um, but yeah, this uh, freaking truing stand. What a freaking win. And the balancer. That's freaking cool as hell. So pretty stoked about that. And for 25 bucks, I mean, I was on Amazon. I was looking at buying a truing stand. And, they, you know, they're like 50 to 100 bucks. But you, I just know that the quality part that you're going to get out of that, you know, it's, just, it's not going to be super, super high quality. We know that, right? How many things have we bought, you know, from Amazon? And uh, you get it and you're just like, eh. That's why I love yard sales, I love estate sales, garage sales, anything like that. Because um, you can find these old quality parts. Old quality parts. I absolutely love it. Man, I'm so bummed. I mean, we'll get it. I'm not losing all, all, uh, all hope here, but I'm a little bummed that this has been a little bit more of a challenge than I had anticipated. We got good, two good fork tubes though. We're good here. These are big, these are in good shape. I'm gonna set those aside. They're clean. They're nice and smooth. This one's gonna be fine. This one's gonna be fine. This one's not even that dirty. That other one, man, that was a piece of work. I do want to take my new seals. I got my new seals here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Here's I, I gotta mark these because these are actually in pretty good shape. Take these. See this one. This guy. This guy just smushed that one too. Brand new seal cover. That's gone. So there's two of these. Two of these. So I'm ending up with some extra parts tonight. It's okay. Just gonna move this stuff over here for now. Cause I think you guys are right, Andrew. I think you're totally right. I think uh, hit it with PB Blaster. Let her sit for the night, and give it or give it a try tomorrow. I think that that is really good advice, and I'm very glad that you offered it because sometimes I get kind of uh, I get kind of a a laser vision or I get super focused on something and I just will not give up and I'll just keep going and going and going and going um, until I break stuff you know until I just you know you get carried away sometimes you know here we got two boots got uh, two boots that were in the box so we're good on that I'm just gonna move some of this stuff. Get it out of the way. We'll make the other table the kind of the fork reassembly area. But what I wanna show you now is kind of goes right in line with the truing table, okay? Or the truing ring. Kind of goes right hand in hand with that because our rims are not the greatest. And I actually feel pretty confident in my ability to lace a wheel i know i can do it i've done it before um ain't no big thing now these are pretty roached right remember you know these spokes are pretty roached they're not good um i don't think i was thinking about dipping the whole wheel into a vapor rust and and seeing what we could do with it um but i'm not feeling like super confident about that just because these are really 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 roached so actually what I did was, is I went into my bin for, oh, where is it? Oh, it's the tag's on the other side, but the 1970 CB350. And I had that one relaced and the wheels were actually in pretty good shape. So what I did was, this is my front, grab the old Evaporust, all right? Where do I got a little space here? I can come over here. I grabbed a little Evaporust and put those in. And one should freaking know it. I basically, with a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of polishing, I actually got myself a full set of really clean 
spokes that are gonna look great on the freaking apocalypse bike. All right, I think it's gonna be really, really great. So this Evaporust cleaned these. Um, I do have a picture on my phone. I can show you what those look like before and give you kind of a proper after. Um, I was thinking about you guys while I was doing this. I was doing this this weekend. And I was like, oh, I, I better take some pictures of this because, you know, people are going to be like, dude, what the hell? So here's kind of what they were looking like. All right. Just like that. They were, they were pretty rusty. They were rusty around the edges. They were, they were pretty dirty. All right. Um, and now, let's see, that was about a day and a half ago. You know, these same ones. Perfectly clean. Perfectly clean. I love it. I have no problem putting these back on the bike. In fact, I think they'll clean up pretty good. Good enough for the Apocalypse bike. Because again, the Apocalypse bike needs to not be shiny, shiny. It needs to blend into its environment, right? The Evaporust really cleaned these up really good. And the thing that made that happen was just time. Just time, I just put them in there. I put them in there on Sunday, Sunday morning. It was right before the Vikings game. That pitiful Vikings game. But anyway, I'm not getting into that right now. Um, and yeah, so what is it, Tuesday? So they've been in there for a couple days. And uh, I was really pleased with the results. So I've got both front and rear spokes um, for the wheels. So we can go ahead and relace those one of these nights and it'll be absolutely fantabulous. So that's kind of fun. And the other thing I wanted to do tonight was to start doing a little bit of work on some of the various rubber pieces in it, it, on this bike that we're gonna need to take care of. And I wanna do kind of an inventory of what am I might gonna need to be looking for, okay? I'm gonna grab a clean rag Fiber towel, preferably. Love me my, my, my fiber towels. And uh, let's just kind of see what we can do here. Now, for those of you who have watched the videos, I'm a huge fan of trying to save these old rubber parts. All right, I'm just gonna give this a little wipe. And how I like to do that, and what has worked well for me on my last two builds, Again, guys, I'm no freaking expert. I don't know what the hell I'm doing most of the time. Just kind of feeling my way through it. Like a bunch of you. Except Roger. Roger's like all over it all. He's throwing out all the facts tonight. Um, this worked really, really well for me to clean all of the rubber parts and then just soak them overnight in armor all. And when I took them out that next morning... I, I'm kidding you not, man. The parts were pliable. They were fresh. Um, they, 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 they were in fantastic shape. So what I want to do is get that heat. I'm just going to start wiping. Here's a gauge cover. I've got these just soaking in kind of a warm water uh, with Dawn is all I'm doing. Now, some of these parts are actually pretty clean. So here's like my battery cable or the battery kind of, you know, you know what it is. It holds your damn battery in, right? It's a strap, battery strap. That's the word I'm looking for. And all I'm going to do is in my box, I have my box here. I'm just going to start popping parts into here after I give these a nice little soaky soak. Okay, so let's just do this. I'll just come right over here. Got a little, it's like a plastic brush little plastic brush, so it's gonna be real gentle. I'm just gonna wash these parts, knock off kind of the years and years of dirt and dust and all that, and uh, give them a nice cleaning, all right? And then from there, what we can do is fill these little compartments on this tray with some Armor All, let them sit for the night, and they're gonna be nice and pliable. It doesn't take much to clean these parts off. Like this part, I swear to God, I've seen this on eBay for like 20 bucks. So this part, if you can save it, you're saving yourself like 20 bucks. 
I think that's pretty cool. This the stuff adds up, man. Just that box of common motor parts that we unboxed uh, early in the stream. I mean, I think that was like two hundred dollars worth of parts, and I had to stop. I was like, I, I can't, I can't keep doing this. Like, I, I could have added easily another thousand dollars worth of parts, but again, I'm trying to kind of hold the throttle here a little bit, and say. Let's work with what we've got. These don't have to be a multi-thousand dollar investment. I started a video, guys, um, outlining how much money I spent on the 1972 CL350. Now, keep in mind that bike was not complete at all. It didn't have an exhaust. It didn't have a seat. It didn't have carburetors. It didn't have uh, air boxes. It, it didn't have side covers. Like, it didn't have anything. So I had to find and source a lot of parts for that but I mean at the end of the day I mean my calculator went over 2,500 bucks and I was like I, I have to just stop now um, and hope that the market really brings a ton of value into those bikes <laughs> would I do it differently no absolutely not it was uh, about a year and two months of a build so it was a really long build and I loved every minute of that project. And it also allowed me um, to make the video series too. Because I couldn't have done the video series. Here, see, I got an extra one of these. How cool is that? 20 bucks, baby. Anybody need one of these? It's not torn or anything. It's in great shape. If you need one, let me know. I only need one. Um, anyway, I don't even remember what the hell I was saying. Some people comment on the videos too that I talk too much. They're like, you talk too much. So I've been considering maybe I should just start like an ASMR channel and we could just do this. Here, let me let me get the mic real close. Get some true ASMR action. Okay. Okay, I'll try to breathe really quietly. How's that working for you guys? Oh, I talked too loud. Talk too loud. How's that working for you guys? Is that working good? Should I, and this one's probably not worth saving though. This one's probably not worth saving. This one's kind of junk. You know what? This is making me want to do just an ASMR motorcycle live stream one night. Not say a freaking word. Just do this. guys let me know in the comments man this is something you guys want to see we can do this all day i'll sit here all day long starting only fans and freaking be off to the races man <laughs> yeah this one's kind of greasy this one's going to take a little bit of a little bit of work but they will come clean and honestly guys like don Don Dish Soap does a great job. I am constantly blown away by how how much you can get going with just a little bit of Don. Man, you guys blew up the chat tonight. This is awesome. And we helped people. Kenji. Kenji got some help. And support. I think support is important as well. A little support, man. Roger's driving in there, giving good suggestions. We're all praising impact wrenches. Love it. Let's 
for some reason I do like saving these old rubber battery things. I don't know why. I really like saving old parts whenever we can. I'll put it on the bottom of my battery box. I don't care. I'll put it on the bottom of my battery box. Put that one down there. And I know I'm missing a couple parts. This one doesn't need anything. That's just for a shock. No idea what this is for. Anybody know what this is for? Anybody know what this is for? What is that for? I don't recognize this. This might not even be for a motorcycle. Ooh, these are coveted though. These things that go on your on the end the, the tubes of your air boxes. Man, these things have been sold out at Common Motor for months. I haven't seen them, and I haven't found them anywhere. There was one guy I saw on a, on a Facebook group that was uh, manufacturing them. These aren't really bad shape. Like these need to get moisturized as soon as possible, and try to save them. Terrence, thanks for joining this during the stream, man. It just got it takes one piece at a time, man. Scrub them up, clean them up. This is all money, guys. This is all money. It's all money. All these little things. This is your little the rubber that goes over on your your fork here. All money, and a lot of it is hard to freaking find, guys. A lot of it is hard to find. These little random rubber pieces. Like I only have one of these. These are the the fork ear reflector. This little rubber piece here. Shoot. Went to eBay. We could go to eBay right now, and we'll see how much somebody's getting for it. I bet shipped to my door, it's 15 bucks minimum. And I'm missing one of them. Oh, I didn't get that one totally clean. Take your time. One piece at a time. Take your time. One piece at a time. My water is filthy. Oh, my God. I should almost take a second and clean that up. So here, my starter solenoid... This, I'm not worried about because I have a new starter solenoid. I have a new one. What did I do with that? What did I do with that? I'm pretty sure I have a new one. And I think there's a rubber piece on it. Let's go to the Brian's box of randoms. Yep. Yep, sure do. It's a brand new starter solenoid right here, and I have the rubber. Oop, where's my camera? Here we go. Oh, wrong camera. Here we go. Brand new starter solenoid, and it's got the rubber piece built right into it. Right here. You can see that. So, I'm good to go there. Just sitting in a box. I've got a new condenser, which I will not need because I am going to put a new regulator rectifier on this. Because guess what? I found one of those. Found one of those laying around the other night. I wasted so much money on my first build, man. I just bought parts like nobody's business. And it kind of helped me out on the second build. But then on the second build, I kind of, I really like shopping. I like buying stuff. So I kind of went out of control a little bit. See these ones? These ones for the uh, swing arm are pretty nasty. They're all covered with grease. And we got to clean that all out. Let's switch. Give you guys a little different view. I think you guys maybe see it a little better from here too. Going up in here. Just like that. Yeah, I definitely need to... Need to Freshen up the water a little bit. That Dove, or no, Don, Don dish soap was doing its thing. What else? Oh, well, we've got a half a gauge thing. I don't need that. I uh, don't need that, and I don't need this. This is probably salvageable. I mean, this this one, it's just broken on the end here. You know, that's pretty typical. This is pretty loose. Oh, it's broke over here, too. So that's kind of junk rubber. 
Got two more little things. Oh, that we have to save this. Actually, no, I have no idea. That's just a remnant of something. But here's our other fork, uh, fork gear top connector. Clean that stuff off. Just like that. And that's everything in there. So let's just throw that in there. Get my water out of the way. And then honestly, guys, I, this works well for me. Um, I mean, I've done it on two bikes now. I think that's a pretty good test is that I will just take, should I just throw this? Breaks my heart to throw this away. <sighs> should I throw it? I don't want to throw it. Yeah, I mean, it's junk, but I don't want to throw it. It's been around for 50 years, 50 years. It's hard to throw that stuff away. So take these, throw those in there. See if I, I hope I have enough product. Man, I'm so bummed on this one though. Like look at that's cracking. So when I put these back on, when I use these, I'm gonna need to use some sort of a sealer. Use some sort of a sealer or something. They're cracked, but man, they are hard to find guys. They are really freaking hard to find. As long as they're not over the top. I wonder if I could do this. Just try to save as much space as I can. And we'll get the armor all out. And just fill these up. Boop. A little low. But that's okay. Ain't no big thing. Keep my chat going. Save the old parts. They are their original, after all. They are original. I love my original parts. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more, Terrence. It'll be totally worth it. I agree. It's great. It, I'm telling you guys, it's just, this is not a, a, a something that, uh, I'm kind of bummed I'm running out. can tell I've done a couple bikes because my big bin of this is done. Um, but I tell you what, I come out here tomorrow and I swishy swish this stuff around. These parts are going to look absolutely beautiful. I'm just going to coat these. Give them a little flippy flip. Make sure that it's getting in all the different kind of crevasses of these parts. Just like this. They're going to look freaking brand new, guys. Like, I'm not, I'm not kidding at all. Like, if you just put it on there now and you wipe it off, it will look better. But it, they're not going to look, like, brand new. I, 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 I should go live for a little while tomorrow night just to show you. Um, how good these parts will come out of here. And then I just pull the parts out, I dump the stuff in there, dump it back in the bottle, and I can use it again and again and again. Just like that. Yeah, I really want these two, these two, I really want these two to get cured up because I cannot find these parts. So I'm going to shuffle some of this around just to make sure that one gets a ton of love because they're going to need it. Gonna need it. Just like that. Bada bing, bada boom. Just like that. Boom. <laughs> You're right, Roger. I will hold on to the parts, guys. Thank you for um, you know, being honest. You know, giving me the two cents, cause you know, I'm just uh, I, I do feel bad every time I, I will throw something away. Like even like an old connector or something, like a, you know, a, a, a male bullet connector or something. I'm always like, I should not throw that away. But it was wore out. This, I don't really need this, but I'll hold on to this for now. Kind of just out of product. I'm out of product right now, so I don't have much of a choice. But that is how I restore old rubber parts. And then all I'm going to do is put this on the shelf, come back to it tomorrow, and, uh, telling you i might come come give them a little bit of a stir um in the middle of the day just kind of whip them around a little bit or maybe before i go to work tomorrow morning that's what i'll do i'll run down here and uh clean those up so we've done the rubber parts tonight i showed you guys that how long have we been streaming we've been streaming what since eight o'clock so we're going on another two hour stream guys another two hour stream that's pretty cool i'm having fun um what else can we do can we do? Oh my God! My wife just texted me. 
and our uh, poodle just passed 400 followers on TikTok. That's pretty cool. My, uh, we got a poodle puppy over Christmas last year, and uh, we started a TikTok for this poodle puppy, and she has 400 followers right now. Way to go, Alice. Way to go, Alice. Um, let's see. What else could we do tonight? What else can we do tonight, guys? What, what else do we got? I've got... Um, let's see. Give me your honest opinion. Here's what I want. I want your honest opinion on these saddlebags. That's what I really want. Look at this. Remember, Apocalypse Bike. It needs to be functional, okay? Needs to be functional. We're gonna do black, okay, black. Oh, I just got an idea of how we could close out the stream. Armor all, Tula Tom, hey, glad you could meet us. Joe, yeah, just armor all, nothing, nothing, nothing special. Armor all, toot, toot, toot. Does a great job, I'm telling you, cleans the stuff up. But what's the honest opinion on these saddlebags? I freaking love these. I think they are so damn cool looking. Um, they're a little weird on a CB or, a, or they, I don't think they'll work on a CL because of the exhaust. Um, but man, they are vintagey and they are freaking cool and they're hard case, right? Uh, can I get it open? Can I get it open with one hand? Oh, come on, Brian. Come on, B. I think I got one down here. Yeah. Bam. They hold a ton. They're hard case. Um, it's got a bracket. I've got a bracket for them. It'll mount right to the rear fender. In fact, these were on my 1970 when I bought them. Or when I bought that bike. And I was just thinking, man, if I did, like a Rhino Line kind of a durable rubber coated paint on it. It would preserve the original thing because you could always peel that stuff off and then just do it all like that. Do the tank like that, do the side covers like that and do that. And then for those of you who missed it, the big purchase were the awesome all black rear shocks. <laughs> Boom. Boom, it's gonna look freaking cool. I think it would look cool, all black, just like that. What do you guys think? What do you think of the side covers or the uh, saddlebags? I, I do have some other options for saddlebags. I have another set of saddlebags that I can show you. It's all a process. Uh, where's that other set of saddlebags? What I do with them? What the heck I do with them? But I do have these as well. So these are like a Kind of a leather bag I could go on as well. It's like that. Yeah, function, Terrence. It's an apocalypse bike. It's an apocalypse bike. It has to carry stuff. It's got to carry like potatoes and raspberries that I find on the trail, you know? But I got these kind of cool leather bags. They're a little small though. That's the only thing I don't like about them. Um, but these leather bags could look kind of cool on this thing too. Shoot, I could do double saddlebags. Do a double saddlebag. Done. I just had a... What if, what if, oh my God. What if, what if we just skip the side covers all together? And we do this. Oh my God. This could really be something right here. That wouldn't get in the way of anything. Do a double saddlebag. I, I said it as a joke, but now I'm not joking. I said it as a joke, but now we ain't joking, guys. I, I'm kind of feeling this just a little bit. Let's see what that would look like. All right, out with this. Let's take the seat off. Because the seat's brown, too. And that looks kind of cool. And then this damn thing, just for now, wonder if I can get her to stay here. Could loop right through the freaking things where the where the air where the thing goes in where the air cover goes anyway. Let's 
a little high, but I could go low, you know, move it down. Okay. I'm kind of feeling this. <laughs> it's not a perfect brown match, but this is a brand new seat and these are kind of an aged bag. What do you guys think of that? Do you think that's dumb? Let me know in the comments, man. Let me know. Or in the chat, not the comments. Dude, you could carry some stuff on that bike. You could carry all kinds of stuff on that bike. How would that look from there? What's the angle look like there? I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying not being so tied to going all original and just have fun with the build. I'm actually really excited about that. I think that's pretty damn cool. I don't know if this bike's ever going to get done. <laughs> Nick, thanks. Not dumb. Go for it. I mean, it's all function, man. Future world stuff. Yeah. I'm thinking about ditching the side covers. I'm thinking about ditching the side covers and going with this leather bag. Leather bag and vintage and vintage hard saddle ba saddle uh, saddle bags. Oh man. Dude, you could carry so much stuff. You could carry so much stuff if we did that. All right, I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling that. I'm feeling that just a little bit. Actually, I'm feeling that quite a lot. I'm feeling that quite a bit. Can you tell? Kind of digging it. Kind of digging it. Guys, I think we got to call it. It's 10 o'clock Eastern. It's 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock. Early, but not early. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's only, it's only Tuesday. But what we're going to do tomorrow, I'll try to pop on. Maybe not for, for a long time. Maybe it will be for a long time. Maybe it'll be like four hours. Who knows? Um, but we'll go and re we'll reveal how we're doing with the rubber pieces for sure. Okay. So these are all going to sit overnight. Just like that. It's going to be in the little bin. All right. And they are just going to become beautiful and they will be malleable and brand new. I think the thing that is guiding the entire direction of this bike right now are these, these black new shocks, man. These are freaking cool. These go with Apocalypse Bike. These go with Apocalypse Bike. Black. And then I need to start researching how I'm gonna finish the tank. I think I'm gonna do a Rhino line. I think I'm gonna do it, or at least like a, uh, I don't think I have, I will not use this, but I do have this. I will not, I promise you, I will not use this, but a higher, more superior quality product. Maybe something like from 3M or something, but like a Flex Seal. Um, Terrence, uh, great minds think alike. I've already been thinking about uh, such a, 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 a contraption for the motorcycle. Like maybe like a 870 shotgun holster or something. Be kind of fun. Um, kind of like the old school World War II motorcycles. Not that I would ever put a firearm in it, ever. Um, props only. Um, but Flex Seal, you know, like the texture of this, like what this is, um, that's kind of what I'm feeling. Only I want to make sure if I do it, that it's not, that it's not a gloss. I don't want a gloss finish at all. Uh, I want it to be flat or matte, uh, matte, the hell. Um, but yeah, maybe a matte finish, flat might be a lot. Um, but, uh, yeah. Kind of feeling this double saddlebag thing. Have to test it out sitting on the bike, but I don't think it would be a problem. I don't think it would be a problem. Because you're up here. These bags aren't super wide. No, they're about that wide. I think you'd be able to go right over that. Your front peg is right here. Boom, boom. I'm feeling it, guys. I'm feeling it. This is a fun stream. This was a fun one tonight, man. We covered a lot of ground, and uh, we, we troubleshot. We uh, found some problems. We navigated some problems. 
The other thing that I should do is I should go live again tomorrow night because we do have to see how this, uh, if we can salvage this, if we can get that, that circlip out of here because uh, that's going to be a problem um, definitely in the future. Put a rag down here. I'm getting everything all dirty. I'm going to let that sit. I'll get my heat gun. Either way, hey guys, if I'm not able to go live tomorrow, I'll for sure post a picture on the YouTube uh, uh, timeline, the posts. Um, that would be cool. Other than that, any other questions, guys? I'll give it a good count, you know, to make sure if you guys got any questions. But I do support. Uh, I, I, I'm so thankful for the support um, that, that you guys are showing the channel. It's so much fun. I upload a video. People are commenting and chiming in. It's awesome. It really keeps me motivated. Um, again, the number one way to support the channel um, is share the videos. Um, Tula, Tula Tom, hats off to you, man. You shared a video uh, in a forum the other day, and I got to watch some of those metrics. People watch those videos um, when they're posted in some of these spots, so that's huge. Um, share the videos. Um, you know, share the links. Um, I got I got big ideas <laughs> for the channel. I just got to get around to implementing them and doing it. Um, really building something really, really cool. I think we're building something really, really cool here. It's fun to see people coming back into the chat and doing that. James Scott. James Scott just showed up. Hey, man. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Um, I'm getting ready to close up shop here, though. Um, unless you, you know, we've been going for two hours. And uh, it was a rough two hours. It was a rough two hours because uh, a really simple job of changing a seal in forks uh, turned into a... Kind of a kind of a kind of a pita, kind of a pain in the ass, uh, but that's kind of how it goes. Um, I think we're good. I think we're good for tonight, guys. Anybody have anything that you want to see? Anything you want me to dig into? I can go a little bit longer, um, but other than that, go make dinner for your for your girls, Joe. Go make a good dinner for your girls. I, I appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, with me. Why do I say us? I, I don't know. I suppose the cameras and the microphone or whatever. It feels like a real production over here. Um, cool, guys. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it for the night. And, um, yeah, we'll be back again. We'll do some reveals later on. We accomplished a lot. But, again, thanks so much for the support. And uh, we'll see you in the next video or we'll see you in the next stream. I have no idea.